Where are you from? Born and raised on Long Island in New York. Born. And what brings you to, you're in Tennessee now, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so I lived in New York my pretty much my whole life growing up, and then when I was 19, I moved to South Africa and have been there for 12 years. And now I'm stateside for a season and just recently made Nashville home base for my travels and stuff here while I'm in the States. I haven't actually verbally shared my story, so bear with me a little bit. I moved to Africa, like I said earlier, when I was 19, um, and I met and married my husband, who is South African, and together we pioneered and launched Thrive Africa, um, and it, it has grown in the past uh, decade plus from it being just him and I to a staff team of over 60 that are accomplishing the work that God has called us to do in South Africa. And about a year and a half ago, it came to light that my husband had been having an affair with one of our staff members. Um, I had known it for a very long time and had been challenging him on it and confronting him, and he continued to deny it until I had enough hard proof that it was no longer possible to deny. How have you held on to your faith? Like, I have been in the darkest place of my life um, pretty consistently for the past year plus. There are some days where it's easier to see some kind of hope or light at the end of it than it is on others, but the majority of days just feel dark. And I absolutely have questioned where God is in it in the sense of not being able to see his good plan in this. Um, I mean, I know that his promise is there, that he works all things for my good, and that um, he wants to leverage my life for him to receive maximum glory. So I know in everything, in every situation, in every moment, even in the darkest of nights that I'm feeling, that there is a plan there for my good and for his glory. And I just don't see that. And I haven't seen it for a long time. Not that I don't trust that he's there or that he'll ultimately work something out. But in, in some ways, it seems very, very long in coming. Um, I'm trying to trust that God is just when the fallout of all of this continues to seem and feel the complete opposite of just. Um, and so trying to trust more in who he is than in what I perceive him to be doing or not doing and realizing how much of my faith historically throughout my life has been in God's hand rather than just in God's heart. Um, and just discovering what it means to trust and rely in God, no matter what the circumstances are like in my life, to try and believe that He is true, loving, just, good, even when nothing in my life looks like any of those characteristics. I think it comes back to why I even call my blog Grit and Glory, which I called it that. I mean, I've been blogging for four years, so that was long before any of this happened in my life. But just now, more than ever, seeing the fact that God uses the grit in our lives just as much as, if not more than, the glory or the goodness or the, the wonderful things that happen. And for us to be willing to be real and authentic and let people see the crap and the grit in our lives, recognizing that even when we can't see how, God is going to use that in some redemptive way, that He restores all things, He makes all things new, He can redeem even the worst of the things that we're going through um, but it's in the telling of our story, as crappy as it may be, it's in the telling of it where we continue to find healing and victory and where we're able to provide that for others. Watching God make life out of our brokenness is, is incredible. And sometimes that might be the only thing that is getting you through the crappiest part of your life. When you get a tiny glimpse of how your willingness to be vulnerable and to share that crap with somebody else, how God is able to use that to speak life to them, to give them hope, to keep them moving forward or seek out the help that they need. Um, that's just incredible. And it just speaks to the redemptive and restorative work of God that He is able to use even the most horrendous ashes of our lives to create beauty for someone else. Get with one or two people that you're able to be completely bare bones with and to let down every mask, every pretense, every need to feel like you have it all together and be willing to say, I don't, and this is the areas of my life that's falling apart. There's a sense of only being able to be authentic in the past tense. 
I struggled with this back in the day, but now look where I'm at. Look how God has changed me and healed me and moved me from beyond there. And absolutely, there is grace and victory in sharing that message. But we need to be honest and be willing to share when we're still in the in the nastiness, in the stuff that we're trusting and hoping that God redeems us from and pulls us out of, but he hasn't yet. And be willing to put words to that place because there's a whole lot more people who are right there with you that need to just hear, I'm not alone, that won't know that if you wait to tell your story until it's all neatly wrapped up with a bow at the end. 